Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. This is from monthly current affairs magazine of Vision IAS and this is August 2024 magazine. And in this particular part, we will cover the IR section. We'll try to wrap it up. I will keep it short and crisp so that you can revise it on time. One more thing. Do not try to mug up everything from the monthly current affairs magazine. If something is important, it will be repeated in PT365 and main 365. As of now, your goal should be just to understand the issue. Okay, now let's start. One more thing. If this part is helpful for you, please share it. If this will get good response, I will try to make up the another sections as well. Now let's start. So first news is India and Global South. So recently India organized or hosted third Voice of Global South Summit. So Voice of Global South Summit is a summit which was first organized in January 2023 and second was organized in November 2023 and recently third one was organized. This Voice of Global South Summit is actually based on India's philosophy of Vasudhav Kutumbkum. That means entire world is one. Now two three important things. A. What is this Global South? So basically these are the North countries and these are the South countries. And this North and South division is based on the Brent report. This categorized countries based on their technological advancement, their GDP, their income. So the Northern part is rich and prosperous. The Southern part is poor. So very basic question can be asked that Brent line or Brent report is related to. So it is related to the division of countries based on their technological advancement and GDP. Now in the third voice of Global South Summit, certain decisions were taken. First thing first, 123 countries participated. China and Pakistan were not invited into this one. Second thing, the theme of this summit was an empowered global south for a sustainable future. And as a result of this third summit, India proposed Global Development Compact. That is GDC. GDC is covered in next article itself. The goal of GDC is to address the problem of rising debt. Debt basically means loan of the developing countries. So entire argument is these are poor countries. They need to borrow money and therefore what is happening is their financial condition is becoming weak. Next topic is Global Development Compact. So first thing first, it was proposed by India as a result of this third Voice of Global South Summit. Okay, what is the main goal of GDC? GDC actually focus on four elements. Number one, it focus on trade. Number two, capacity building. Number three, sharing technology. And number four, finance and grants. So what is the ultimate goal of GDC? Ultimate goal is to ensure that development and infrastructure structure financing do not impose a debt burden on the developing countries. As of now, various countries such as China follow the practice of debt trap. Debt trap basically means they will provide huge amount of loan. Huge loan will be given plus it will be with high borrowing cost. Borrowing cost. And now the countries will not be able to repay and they will be in debt trap. That means to repay previous loan, they will have to take one more loan. Two classic examples are Pakistan and Sri Lanka, which are the victim of this policy of China. So that is GDC, Global Development Compact. Now, one important question is why the loan or debt of developing country is rising? A, their cost of borrowing is quite high. For example, developing countries have to borrow money at two to four times higher than that of USA. That means the interest rate or borrowing rate is higher than USA as well as of Germany. Apart from that, their infrastructure is not well developed. So government have to borrow more money. This increase public debt and they don't have much resources. Number one. Number two, their taxation system itself is quite weak. For example, in case of India, the tax to GDP ratio, tax to GDP ratio is roughly 11.8%. In case of various OECD countries, it is around 30%. So there is a huge difference. Next news is related to 10 years of India's activist policy. Activist basically means we will focus on the countries which are on the eastern side. So that is activist policy. This was announced in 2014 as a result of 9th East Asia Summit. So recently it completed 10 years. Recently Indian Prime Minister also visited Singapore and that's why this policy was in use. Now within eastern side there is one 
grouping that is ASEAN which is quite critical because ASEAN is India's fourth largest trading partner and it accounts for roughly 10% of India's total trade. Now what is ASEAN? ASEAN is actually a association of Southeast Asian nations. This was established in 1967 and this was established as a result of Bangkok declaration. This consists of 10 member countries. Recently East Timor was also inducted into this grouping. So this is going to be the 11th member. Apart from that, recently ASEAN was also in news because of Myanmar. So Myanmar was supposed to host 2026 summit of ASEAN. But in case of Myanmar, the military junta of Myanmar has taken over the democratically elected government in 2021. So that government was headed by Aung San Suu Kyi. And therefore, now military controls the country. And that's why the ASEAN leaders decided that Myanmar will not be taking over the rotational leadership. Now, the similar situation happened in case of Bangladesh also that the democratically elected government faced problems. Next news is related to India and Vietnam. So, recently, Prime Minister of Vietnam visited India. Vietnam is a part of Asia and the capital is Hanoi and it shares border boundary with South China Sea. So, with Vietnam, we have a plan of action which will implement the comprehensive strategic partnership. Apart from that, India has provided the credit line to enhance or support the maritime security of Vietnam. Again, no need to mug up the numbers. Both countries will collaborate to conserve and restore the My Son World Heritage Site temples. So, both will work together. Apart from that, there will be development of National Maritime Heritage Complex in Lothal and both countries will cooperate on that also. Myanmar will also, sorry, Vietnam will also join CDRI that is Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. As the name suggests, the objective is to develop infrastructure which can withstand the disasters. Next is related to Malaysia. So, Malaysian Prime Minister also visited India. Now, with Malaysia, we have a strategic partnership. Malaysia have decided to join IBCA, that is International Big Cat Alliance. So, IBCA was actually launched in 2023 on the occasion of 50th anniversary of Project Tiger. Project Tiger was announced to conserve and protect the tigers. Now, apart from that, Malaysia also supported the review of AITIGA. What is this AITIGA? That is ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement. So, this is about the trade in goods between India and ASEAN countries. Now, recently Malaysia was in news because of conflict between Malaysia and China over exploration in South China Sea. And both countries claim sovereignty over that area. So, we will try to understand that in a separate article. It is covered later. Next news is related to India, Central and Eastern Europe relations. So, recently, Prime Minister of India visited Poland and Ukraine. And that shows that India is giving importance to these areas. Now, in this context, China has 16 plus 1 initiative. What is the 16 plus 1 initiative? This is initiative of China to promote business and investment with 16 countries of Central and Eastern Europe. Now, within these countries, that means within this Central and Eastern Europe countries, certain countries support India's bid for permanent seat in United Nations Security Council. Apart from that, various countries, for example, this Visegrad group, that is V4 group or V4 countries, have supported India's membership in NSZ. NSZ is Nuclear Suppliers Group. And these V4 countries are Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary and Slovakia. Now, recently Prime Minister visited Russia. In fact, after the third term, I think Russia was the first country that he visited. Okay, so he visited Russia and Austria in July. Again, no need to mug up the dates, but it is just to understand the chronology. And during that visit, the Prime Minister also participated in 22nd India-Russia Annual Summit. And India and Russia have a goal to increase the bilateral trade, bilateral trade to 100 billion dollars, 100 billion dollars by 2030. And this was a visit in the month of July. In the month of August, Prime Minister visited Poland and Ukraine. So this is Russia. This visit was in the month of July and then in Poland and Ukraine in the month of August. I'm just specifying the dates so that you can have a chronology in your mind. Okay, apart from that, India is also working on 
improving connectivity with the Middle East as well as with the Europe. And this is referred as India Middle East Europe Corridor. So this will improve our connectivity with the Middle East as well as with the Europe. Next news is related to India Poland relationship. So capital of Poland is Warsaw. Recently, both countries completed 70 years of their diplomatic relationship. As a part of this official visit, the countries have signed social security agreement to protect the interest of cross-border workers. Apart from that, India is going to start Jam Sahib of Nawanagar Youth Exchange Program. So as a part of this, both countries, that is India and Poland, are going to work together. Now, this is quite interesting. During Second World War, the Maharaja Jam Sahib established a camp in Jamnagar in Gujarat to provide shelter to the refugee Polish children. Polish children basically means children from Poland who were displaced because of this entire world war situation. So, the Maharaja established a specific facility and opened an orphanage for the Polish refugee in Gujarat. And popularly, he was known as Jam Sahib. And roughly 6,000 people were given shelter. So, that is why his role was quite critical. And that's why this name, Jam Sahib of Nawanagar Youth Exchange Program. Next news is related to India-Ukraine relationship. So, for the first time, Indian Prime Minister visited Ukraine. Our diplomatic relationship was established in 1992. And during this visit, both countries have decided to work together for Bhishm Cubes. What is this Bhishm Cube? Bhishm stands for Bharat Health Initiative for Sahayog, Hit and Matri. So these are portable hospitals. Portable hospital basically means they can be moved from one place to another place. The objective is to provide medical facilities. The trade between India and Ukraine is not much. It is roughly $3.3 billion. Ukraine is a significant source of sunflower oil for India. However, after Russia-Ukraine conflict, this was adversely impacted. Now, geographical location of Ukraine. So this is Ukraine. This is Russia and this is the Crimea, the place which was in news because of Russia-Ukraine conflict. This is Sea of Azov. This is Black Sea. Next news is related to para diplomacy. So recently, Ministry of External Affairs criticized Kerala government for appointing official for external cooperation. Now, what is this entire controversy? In our country, it is the central government that is responsible for external affairs. That means relationship with other countries. Recently, Kerala government appointed specific official for external cooperation and that's why it was in news. This part or this is known as a para-diplomacy. Para-diplomacy basically means role of sub-national entities. Here, sub-national basically means state governments in shaping the international engagement. Now, to promote cooperation and to promote the role of states, MEA had set up states division in 2014. However, right now the criticism was that everything in terms of foreign relationship should go through MEA, that is Ministry of External Affairs. Next news is related to South China Sea Tensions. So, long story short, Malaysia was exploring resources in Sarawak waters. This area is roughly 100 km away from Malaysia and roughly 2,000 km from mainland China. China said it is part of their territory. There means China's territory because these areas are covered by the 10 dash line. So, there are two important points. 9 dash line. 9 dash line basically refers to areas in which China claim its sovereignty. And the extended version of this is 10 dash line. Okay. Now, Beijing, that is China, expressed its displeasure over Malaysia's oil and gas exploration near Luconia Shoals. Let's try to have a look at the geographical location of Luconia Shoals. So, this is Luconia Shoals. This is Malaysia and this is China. What is this 9 dash line? 9 dash line is the claim by China in South China Sea. So, let's try to understand it using map. This red line which you see, this is the claim by China. That means China says that this is part of their territory. That means they have exclusive control in this region. This is what the matter of conflict is. So that's why various countries have disputes with China as far as South China Sea is concerned. Next news is related to Indo-American diaspora. So even though Indian community constitute about 1.5% of US population, they have a significant role. For example, CEO of various companies are of Indian origin. They have a cultural role to play. 
roughly 13% of US scientific publication publications had Indo-American co-authors. So in a very simple sense, this is a significant soft power. Soft power. See, hard power basically means military power. Soft power basically means the cultural significance or non-military power. Next news is related to India elected as the vice chair of IPEF Supply Chain Council. What is this IPEF? That is Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. This was launched in 2022 in Tokyo in Japan. 14 countries are member of this. India is one of them. There are four pillars of this trade, supply chain, clean economy and a fair economy. India have joined the remaining three and we are a observer in a trade pillar. In a trade pillar. Now, there are three supply chain bodies in IPEF. These are one is supply chain council. So this will make sure that the supply chain of essential items is maintained. Second is crisis response network. That means how we are going to respond to the crisis. And third is labor right advisory board. That basically means to protect the right of workers. So first one is supply chain council. Second one is crisis response network. And third is labor right advisory board. Next is related to St. Martin Island. So USA want to establish a military base in St. Martin. Martin Island of Bangladesh. Now, in 1974, Bangladesh and Myanmar had an agreement and as a part of that agreement, this island became the part of Bangladesh. Geographically, it is quite strategic. Let's try to understand. This is St. Martin Island. This is geographical location of Andaman and Nicobar Island. And this is Strait of Malak. And that's why USA is showing its interest into this. So, this is the reason. Next news is related to Kursk region. So, recently, Russia declared emergency in this area. Now, it is situated in the central part of Eastern Europe and it borders Ukraine. So, this is geographical location and this is a part of Russia. So, these were the important IR-related current affairs. Thank you and that's all for the day.